there's so much that we can learn from nature and there's so much that, that you can receive from nature if you put yourself in a mindset where you're ready to listen and you're ready to appreciate things for what they are. It's so easy to kind of feel disconnected from, from your roots and from, from the earth around you. Me and Nick were busking, playing and guitar and sax and we were playing I think a few compositions that we had written together and also just improvising um, just just was walking past and heard us playing and just came and said hi and we got chatting and um, discovered that we had very similar interests and after jamming with Jess a few times we just decided to give it a go as a project and do all those as a three piece and it we got a great reaction to the gigs, we just took it from there. For the new album, when working on the tracks, often things end up quite different from where they started. If I, if I have a kind of starting place, so, you know, that it'll go on a journey before it kind of becomes like a fully fledged thing. So if I discover a certain harmonic idea and it's new to me, I'll, I'll, I can get really into that and play around with it for hours and then get to a point where I feel like I know it and I know I've learned something new about harmony um, that's expressing something different and then often that's the kind of thing I'll get excited about and I'll bring it in to show the guys and I'll be like, what do you think about you know these chords or this progression? spend more time jamming, which is always something that frustrated us in the past is when you're on the clock and you've got an eight hour day. If you know you've got, you know, th you know three tracks to do in a day, it doesn't leave much time for jamming and improvising, but this time we got to do more of that. And yeah, and some of that stuff ended up being really, really good. And um, that kind of thing just doesn't happen unless you can kind of relax and you, you don't feel pressured to get everything done in you know, a short amount of time. Yeah, there's one, one of the improvs made it onto the album, actually the final track is um, effectively an improv that we did with a, some mixing and a field recording from, from outside the studio. So that's probably a fairly good check for how it felt to be there. There's even a bit at the end where, because the jam kept going um, and Jess was playing drums and we decided it should fade off there. You can hear the drums from outside the booth on the explain so it's just kind of like feels like you're almost walking away from the drum space as the track ends, which is quite cool. A few things we recorded that aren't on the album that were results of late night jams. And some of those jams were really fun and really mad. And it actually, sometimes I, I think the things that aren't necessarily intended for people to hear, but are more of a just group, it's actually just having fun, just mucking around and like playing with music, because that's what we're in it for at the end of the day, is to actually enjoy ourselves and have fun with our instrument. 2022 was a really interesting and enjoyable year for our live playing. The show felt like it started to extend in different ways um, and reach new places. We incorporated lots of improvisational sequences into the live show and extended those elements. It felt quite playful in general, kind of renewed sense of confidence and curiosity, sharing experiences with our audience as we play and develop the tunes live. Um, new things happen and new things occur to us as a group as we're doing it. So it's always really special and kind of the main thing that we look forward to doing.
on this album we recorded in rural Wales at Giant Wafer Studios. You know, a, re a really nice thing in the morning when you're making your tea or something and you just feel really close to nature and your surroundings. You know, there's like a valley right out the window, it's really picturesque. Uh, you open the, the side door of the, the mixing room, the control room, and there's just like cows munching away at the grass and stuff right next to the, you know, right next to the studio. I think you've got it. I was playing Nay outside on the table one morning, just warming up and we turned around and there was like, I don't know, like 30 or 40 cows had just gathered to like listen to the flute and we're like, this is weird. <laughs> So a lot of the meaning, for me at least, uh, tends to come in really properly when, you, when you're playing it to people. And when you're talking to people after gigs about what their experience of listening to the album has meant to them, that's the real reason, I guess, that we're doing this is, um, you know, because the process to us is our process and we'd be kind of doing that as musicians anyway. It's, it's part of the very internal and sort of within this little bubble collective process but that thing once it's out there and people are listening to it, it becomes a whole other entity and that is um i think when it really gains a much larger meaning is when people start to incorporate it as part of their lives and it becomes something a source of something to them some sort of emotional content to them and that's something that's completely out of our control and is really special, I think. You hear some amazing stories when you're on the road and that keeps us doing it, you know. 